You both said today that you love each other and I believe it, but I'm trying to tell you love is not enough for a successful marriage. There's so many other things that go in it. It's not just about you anymore. Here is today's case. When we first started dating, I wasn't quite sure of myself where I stood sexually. I don't really see gender, Your Honor. I love her for who she is. I don't care if she was a boy or a girl. I'm attracted to her, her features, her personality. I love everything about her. You said that she has tried to sabotage the relationship. Yes, a week into the relationship, she decided to call up one of her old flings and mess around with him. And she tells me about it. She told you about it? Yes, ma'am. So why did you hook up with the ex and then go and tell him about it? Court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Faith Jenkins presiding. Your Honor, this is the case of Thomas versus Sayona. Thank you, Juan. Travis Thomas. Yes, Your Honor. You have brought Jasmine Sayona. Yes, Your Honor. To court today. The two of you have been in a relationship for seven years. That's correct. You say you've had a number of issues that's led to lack of trust a lot of insecurity, and you want to discuss it here on Divorce Court today because you're on the verge of a breakup. That's correct, Your Honor. I'll start with you, sir. Why don't you give me some background? Your Honor, today I'm here at Divorce Court because I'm not sure if I can continue on for much longer. Um, throughout our relationship, I've done everything that I've said I was going to do for her. You know, I've honored my commitment to her. Um, I feel like she hasn't reciprocated that. Um, if we can't work out these issues, like her insecurities and her inability to see my genuine efforts, then I'm not sure if I can continue this relationship. Hmm. How did the two of you meet? Um, middle school. Um, I met him online, actually. Um, on what? MySpace. Oh, oh, MySpace. Okay. Yeah, yeah one's still Oof. on MySpace. <laughs> uh, we're trying to get him to the new century. <laughs> Hasn't happened yet. So you I feel met like on MySpace. I wouldn't be as insecure as I am today <laughs> if, like, he put more thought into like how things would affect me. I mean, I thought, like, at least by now, we would have, like, our own place and we would be, like, a lot further than, than we really are in our relationship. Mm -hmm. And, like, we're stuck in the beginning of, like, like, nothing has progressed. Nothing has progressed. Nothing has progressed. What is the real issue, Mr. Thomas? Well, the real issue, if, if I may, let me start with how we met. You know, if, if, sure. if I may. So way back when middle school and whatnot, and we met on MySpace, like you said, um, you know, when, when we first started dating, I wasn't quite sure of, my, of myself where I stood sexually, you know what I'm saying? Um, you know, if I was straight, bi, gay or whatever. Um, and we started going out. Uh, a family member of mine got wind of it and started to, he strongly disagreed with where we were. Um, he didn't like the fact that I was dating a boy. So he whipped me every day. And eventually, you know, I broke it off because of this. Um, your family years, member beat you up every day? No, not every day, but, you know, he, he put, put me down because of it, for sure. I was, you what? mean physically, emotionally, or both? Physically. Phys mm. So years down the line, we reconnect, and I'm sure of myself at this point, you know what I mean? I know what I like, and I know what I want, and I see, I don't really see gender, Your Honor. I see who she is, and I love her for who she is. I wouldn't care if she was a boy or a girl. I wouldn't care for that. I, I'm attracted to her, her features, her personality. I love everything about her. Mm -hmm. You said that she has tried to, according to you, sabotage the relationship. Yes. A few um, times. How has she tried to do that? All right. When we first started dating, um, we were very clear to one another about our desires and what we wanted out of a relationship. We had both just gotten out of a negative relationship. We expressed to one another, we, weren't, we aren't going to cheat. We're not going to mess around on one another. And we were going to be really upfront about th these sorts of things so that we don't have to ever hurt someone like that or be hurt like that ever again. Um, a week into the relationship, this goes out the window. And if I find out that she decided to call up one of her old flings and mess around with him. You know, and she, tells me, and she tells me about it. She told you about it? Yes, ma'am. So why did you hook up with the ex and then go and tell him about it? He probably Just because like, I was really scared. Like, I really wasn't ready for, to be in a relationship. I didn't want to, like, jump into a relationship. Mm -hmm. I've always, like, liked him. So I thought the quicker, like, I just, like, messed it up, like, the sooner, like... So that was I early could... on. Let me ask you something. Has it been the same thing? It hasn't been, no. Like, Travis really has been very great to me. Mm-hmm. Um, in terms of like... Showing you love and affection and support and all of these things? Yeah. So why are you upset? What, what is it that, that bothers you? Why are you so emotional right now? Because I have like hurt him. <laughs> like I, I know I messed up like many times. So. Um, because of my like insecurity and my self-hate. Mm -hmm. 
And I, put, I usually put it on him, and it's really like me looking at myself wrongly. Mm -hmm. And have you ever been able to get past this and realize that he loves you for who you are? Uh, um, have you come to terms with that? Have you accepted that? Yeah, I mean, like, it's mostly like recently, I, when I finally like have come to terms with him like loving me and stuff, but like I sort of feel like it's too late. Like, too late for uh, what? to like redeem myself or like whatever. Like I sp spent like about like the first five and a half years of like him like pressuring him like you don't love me. And then he would like literally stay by my side like day in, day out, go to bed with me every single night, like. One of the issues between the two of you is really the fact that she's told you numerous times you don't really love her. She also has this issue with telling you you're attracted to real women. True. Tell me about that. Just to start, like, this insecurity, I really don't see it. For, for the most part, I'm the one who paid for her first doctor visit so she can begin her transition. I'm the one who really suggested it. When I was, when I was younger, I, saw, I looked at her face, I looked at her eyes, I looked at her high cheekbones, her hips, her hands. She says these small, delicate hands, bony, you know what I mean? And I just, honestly, I didn't see a male. I just saw, you know, I saw my girl. You know, that, that's the simple truth of it. What is it exactly that you're insecure about, Jasmine? That I don't have, like, the biology that he, like, likes. Like, I feel like a freak. But he's been with you a long time. If he didn't love you for who you are, do you think he'd be with you for seven years and treating you the way he does and telling you that he loves you every day? You gave me examples about you walking across the street, how she feels when you open the door for other women. Tell me about these examples. I mean, we've talked about that many a times, and it just seems like she, uh, sometimes I feel she's looking or nitpicking almost, look, trying to find something that she can, for, for example, like we'll go to a restaurant, I'll put my things down for like a second, like half a second, and she think it might block my view of her for a minute, and she'll be like, what, you don't want to see my face or something like that? I'm like, what, no, of course, that's not it, that's, that's ridiculous. Mm -hmm. What about when you were walking across the street? Like, walk, like walking across the street, she'll think I was trying to get across the street to check out some, some girls that were over there or whatnot, you know what I mean? And, that's not the truth. She knows very well that our destination's on the other side of the street. But I guess how I went about it might have insinuated to her like I was going over there, mostly to go and, you know. And you said you talked about holding the door open. My part in this was actually kind of wrong. Um, but we were, we were going out to the car, and uh, we were with another couple. And I got the door for the lady first, and I got her stuff into the car, and then I got the door for her. And then I got into the car, and then I see where I went wrong immediately. Like, oh, I didn't prioritize my girl over this girl. Mm -hmm. So, but you actually I admit, didn't like open the door at all for me. And then like, you didn't. You just did it for her, and she was with her boyfriend. So, which, uh, like, and I admit that I was wrong with that. that. I, I have no, I have no excuse. I thought I opened the door, and I, if you if you remember that I didn't, I admit that I was wrong. I'm sorry. And it's so okay. she takes that as a slight against her because yep. she sees you doing these things for other women. Is that what it is? I mean, yeah, like. He has a girlfriend, mm -hmm. and that's me. Like, why is he doing this other stuff for, like, other people, especially if, like, they're with their own boyfriend? Like, I'm sorry if your boyfriend isn't... You don't think he's just being polite? I mean, uh, but they have boyfriends to do that for them. Do they need, like, their boyfriend and my boyfriend? Like, mm -hmm. I don't think so. And, like, you know how, like, insecure I am about that. You should already know that, like, that's already gonna be something that's gonna, like, affect me negatively. <laughs> Is there a part of you that feels like you don't deserve someone like Mr. Oh, Trump? yeah, that's, like, a huge part of it, too. Like... Mm -hmm. Have you ever talked to anyone, a professional, about how you feel about yourself and about your own, you said, self-hatred issues? No, I haven't. Um, I was raised in, like, a Christian household. So, like, being gay was already wrong. And then, like, transitioning from, like, male to female was, like, an abomination. So, I mean, like, really, that's just where my, most of my self-hate comes from. Mm -hmm. And I know it's not true, especially, like, now that I surround myself with people who should put me in a more positive light in itself. Mm -hmm. And he does. Like, I love him. He does make me feel good about myself. What is it exactly that you're insecure about, Jasmine? I want you to say it in your own words. I don't want to, I don't want to put words in your mouth. That I don't have, like, the biology that he, like, likes. Like, I feel like a freak. But he's been with you a long time. It's been seven years. If he True. didn't love you for who you are,
Do you think he'd be with you for seven years and treating you the way he does and telling you that he loves you every day? I mean, no. It's true. Like... So how long would it take for you to be convinced? I mean... <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I, I feel convinced now, like... I like, you know, I finally do believe him. And then now that I finally do believe him, I feel like he doesn't believe that, like, I believe him. Like, you if know, that makes sense. Like, does that make sense? I think Mr. Thomas has done everything he can. I think he's done all the right things. Yeah. He and he's told you all the right words. And, but he can't convince you of anything if you really don't feel that way about yourself, if you don't feel worthy of yourself or even worthy of love from him or anyone else. Because from everything I've heard so far today, he's been idyllic yeah, he has. in, in the relationship. You were born into a body that didn't really feel like yours. And the love you got around who you were just came from the idea that you had to look a certain way, that you had to act a certain way, and it's painful and it's horrible. And the really hard thing about this is nobody taught you how to love yourself. If you'd like your case to be heard on Divorce Court, call us toll-free 1-877-311-2222 or log on to our website at divorcecourt.com. Miss the show? Watch full episodes on our streaming platforms and follow us on social media for exclusive content. So really, I have to, I have to turn to you now and talk to you about how you're going to get the help that you need to feel good about yourself because now we're talking about internal work and your acceptance of other people when they treat you well. Yeah. And getting past what you were told when you were a child, what you were told by that former boyfriend and accepting the fact that, you know, there'll be a choir of voices telling you who you are, who you are, but there's really only one voice that counts more than the others and that is your own. True. Um... I actually asked a friend of mine, he's a therapist and a specialist, if he would come to court and hear this case today. Because I was very concerned and my, and my heart really went out to you when I read about this case, your testimony, and how you were feeling. His name is Abilash Pulikin. He's a licensed counselor and therapist with over 10 years of experience. And he's here today, he's been listening to the testimony and I'd like to invite him in the courtroom now. Juan, would you get the witness? <laughs> Mr. Pulikin, thank you for joining us today. Thank you for having me, Your Honor. I have Travis Thomas and Jasmine Sayona in court with me today. Have you had an opportunity to listen to everything they've shared today? I have. I really would love for you to speak to Ms. Sayona because the issues that I see really stem from the way she sees herself mm -hmm. and the way she feels about herself. Mm -hmm. And she hasn't been able to get out of her own way for a long time, seven, it's been seven years in this relationship. And I'd just like for you to speak to that. Jasmine, the thing that I wanna say is, so much of what I see revolves around the idea of how you see your own womanhood. You were born into a body that didn't really feel like yours. And the love you got around who you were for a long period of time, whether it was from family members, whether it was from other partners, not Travis, but from a lot of other partners, whether it was from the people around you, just came from the idea that you had to look a certain way, that you had to act a certain way, that you had to move a certain way, and if you weren't, you were a freak. You've been called that, and it's painful, and it's horrible. And the really hard thing about this is, nobody taught you how to love yourself at a very young age. And you didn't learn to really embrace the idea that you are a woman, even though you realize it, even though you look like one, even though you move like one, even though the man you love sees you as one, there's a part of you that doesn't buy into the idea that you are a real woman. And I can understand why that's so painful for you. Where does she go from here? Because it's been a long time. Mm -hmm. They've been in this relationship for seven years right. and there have been many different instances of self-sabotage. She's constantly pushing him away. Mm -hmm. Is there anything she can do at this point in her life? What can she do to turn this around going forward and start embracing who she is and Mr. Thomas and the love that he has for her? 
That's a good question. And the thing that I'm going to say is the biggest skill that you'll need to learn is how to let yourself be loved. You know how to love, but again, you weren't really taught how to love yourself as you are. And I think so much of it can really be taught to you by a trained clinician who is used to working with people who have gone through transitions to break down a lot of that hurt and pain that you've been carrying around with you to teach you how to love, but also to find communities mm -hmm. of other transgender individuals who have had your journey, who have gone through many of the same struggles and endured the same pain and loss and abuse that you have. Hearing those stories is going to help you feel much less alone. And it's going to help you open up to the fact that there is a man right there across from you that wants to love you and that wants to be with you and loves you for who you are. Thank you, Mr. Polican. You're welcome. Have you ever spoken to a therapist before today? Um, no, not really. What'd you think about what he said? I know it's something I should do. Mm -hmm. Like, I know it's part of like the whole process and everything. I just haven't made time or I should find a therapist. I think you have to find someone to talk to who you can really express yourself to and also the support you need in a community of people who have been through and have shared experiences. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's a, like, sort of hard for me to find people to talk to. Mm -hmm. We're in the middle of a pandemic. This entire audience that you see here today, virtual technology is amazing. You can talk to anyone from around the world without even leaving your living room. You hear me, yeah. Miss Selma? Yeah. So it's not that difficult because there are a lot of people with your shared experience and I want you to be able to connect with them and get a support group because you have to start finding a way to build yourself up. And it can't come from anyone else at this point. It has to be what you do and the work that you do internally. Okay. You understand? Yeah. And my real hope for you is that you can begin to care more about what you think of yourself than about what others think of you. Okay. Okay. I have to tell you, I hear cases in divorce court every day and I, and I see the worst of the worst sometimes in <sighs> terms of behavior. And it's not often in life we get to do life with someone who genuinely loves us and cares for us and accepts us unconditionally. Because every day I see people in this courtroom, you know what one of the biggest problem is? They're trying to change the other person into being someone who they want them to be. Every day. They're trying to change things that they don't like about somebody else. You don't have that. You have someone here who loves you for you. And everything that you bring and represent in this relationship, just the way you are. And I'm telling you, that is a treasure. You should treasure it. And do the work that you need so this relationship can work. Because it really is up to you now. Good luck to both of you. Thank you, Your Honor. About Judge Faith's verdict, um, it felt really good to be validated for someone to see that I've been doing what I'm supposed to do and for her to suggest to Jasmine go and get some professional help, I'm all for, I'm all for it. I'm gonna take her if I have to. I know if I don't go out and get help, like, I might lose them. And I don't want to do that. I love you, babe. We got this. Don't be scared. Okay? We got it, babe. Good job. Good job. Good job. Oh my god. We did it. Good job. <laughs>